Luke Thomas in Las Vegas, Nevada, outside the MGM Grand Garden Arena at the Media Tent, here with a man who needs very little introduction, the CEO of Top Rank. Bob, thank you for your time. Um, have you enjoyed this process? There seems to have been enough reconciliation to make it go forward, but a lot of sort of digging at each other along the way. How has this process been for you? It's been a very hard promotion because of a lot of nonsense and a lot of infighting and people making alliances with other people. But, you know, when you've been through a horrible situation and now you're approaching the finish line and you can see the end, you're relaxed and you're happy and you don't really realize until you think about it how horrible the situation was that you went through. Help me understand, what, when you say horrible, you mean the power struggle? You mean the terms that were actually agreed to? What, what exactly was so bad about it? Uh, the negotiation of terms between the two fighters and the two promoters, that took longer than usual, but it was negotiation. And once that deal was signed, the other side tried to use its relationship with MGM to get around what we had negotiated and signed. For example, the, co the contract between the promoters say that both companies have to be signatories to the agreement with MGM. And they had MGM take the absurd position that they didn't want my company, Top Rank, to be a signatory. Stuff like that. Or, let me give you an example. We like, in our fights, to do spectacular lighting and on the grid and so forth. It makes it more of a significant event, uh, like uh, the UFC does. Uh, and uh, when we proposed it, and they asked the course, the Showtime asked the court, we said it would be around 400000 to do that. And they came back and they said, no, it wasn't worth it and they didn't want to spend the money. Okay, that's a legitimate position. Uh, you want this? Too much, in my opinion? Okay, I respect that. So then Todd DeBuff, who's the president of my company, speaks to Richard Plepler, the chairman of HBO, and he says, no, damn it, we want this to look great. HBO and Top Rank agreed each to pay half. So now we went back to Showtime and said, hey, great news. We're going to do this, and it's costing you nothing. And Showtime said, no, we don't want you to do it. Just to, what, be spiteful or? Just to break our balls. The truth. And you can ask Showtime, why did you turn down the extra in-arena stuff that top rank and HBO was willing to pay for itself to enhance the people's enjoyment of the event. Would they respond, well, because we have a different aesthetic for how the shows are supposed to look than HBO or Top Rank? No, because what they're doing is putting a garden variety, nothing, enhance, you know, yeah, there'll be cameras, they'll carry the fight and so forth, but it's not that spectacular experience that people like. And if it cost them nothing and didn't interfere with their production, why would they say no? Let's talk about that press conference for just a moment. Did, did you, it had to have been, right? It was intentional when you got up there, you talked about how great HBO was. Not that any of that's factually incorrect, but that you made it a point to say it, that you made it a point to say how great Mandalay Bay is. Where I'm staying, it's all true, but was that, when you went in there, you said, I'm gonna make sure I get this point across because I haven't had that kind of voice through this process this whole time. Well, yes and no. Because what I was saying about HBO, I really meant. And I think HBO was very supportive of what we were doing. And they were fought tooth and nail ridiculously by Showtime. So I thought I could say that. And as far as Mandalay Bay, remember, MGM, this hotel is one part of the MGM company. So is Mandalay. And I wanted people to understand 
that whatever problems we had with people here at MGM, the people at Mandalay couldn't be nicer, have gone out of their way to be hospitable and so forth, and I felt I owed them that. Is there any possibility that what's happened here has created any future environment where working with Showtime or Mayweather, well, we'll see what happens with Mayweather Promotions, but with Showtime can happen again. Is there any kind of major circumstance where you could say there can be more detente, the, the Cold War can be let go of? Well, you never say never, and having been through this experience, uh, we will know how to prevent it from the bad part from reoccurring. In other words, if there's a rematch and we say, okay, we'll do it HBO and Showtime, but you Showtime, you're not gonna be able to do this, you're not gonna be able to do that, to interfere with a good presentation of the event. You see, one of the things that happened here is they wanted to freeze us out and make it their event. The problem is they don't know what they're doing. They couldn't sell sponsorships. We sold all the sponsorship, which I mentioned today. Record amount. We did the deal on the closed circuit, which they opposed. Every single deal for television rights, we did, not them. So in effect, we co-opted them and took over the production, promotion. And they were like fighting a guerrilla action <laughs> against, as silly as that may be. I want to talk about the main event in just a second, but there has been a little bit of pushback about, look, everyone's happy about the main event being made. It's the fight of the decade, century, whatever. But there's a little pushback about the rest of the card not being that great. And so they say the last big fight was Alvarez versus Mayweather, and that had a great co-main event, Danny Garcia versus Lucas Matisse. Why was there not as much effort to make a uh, huge co-main event for this one? Was it just because of the size of the main event? No, because uh, each company was permitted to do one fight, which they paid for themselves, to be on the under on the televised undercard, and we selected a title fight by Vasil Lomachenko, who I believe is perhaps now in his fifth professional fight, maybe top five boxes in the world, and I wanted to showcase him, and he's fighting a real tough Puerto Rican guy. So I wasn't necessarily interested in some name against some name. I thought this was a great opportunity to have the public see uh, Lomachenko. Now when it came time for that car, for, the, for their fight, they took uh, uh, Santa Cruz, who's, who is a very good fighter, and they put him with some guy who's lost two out of the last three fights or whatever, but that was their business and that was their call, and it was not something I had a veto over. So let's talk about the main event. Bob, you've been promoting boxing for decades. I wouldn't say where does this rank, but what is the closest thing to this that you've experienced in terms of the sport of boxing? Well, I've done and been involved in some major, major events, really major, and this is major. Ali Fraser first fight, whole country stopped, the world stopped, big political ramifications, Ali had opposed the Vietnam War. Everybody called him a traitor. Now, a number of years later, everybody was sort of saying, hey, maybe he was right, you know? So that was a whole discussion in the United States and around the world. And public, we couldn't, we didn't have any distribution because we had to use closed circuit to go to theaters and arenas, and we could only service 400 because telephone company lines were limited. There were no satellites, but that was huge. And then later on, when Leonard fought Duran, that was a huge fight with the Hispanic against Sugar Ray Leonard, and it did fantastic business, but it was the closed circuit era again, so we were limited. And then later on in the 80s, we had Hagler and Hearns and Hagler and Leonard, and those were major events. And in the 90s, we had De La Hoya and Trinidad. Now this event, 
has a number of advantages. One, we're in the social media uh, uh, era, and everybody is tweeting and this and instantaneous communication. So everybody is paying attention to the fight. Uh, the We have 100 million homes in the United States that could buy the pay-per-view. We have millions more in UK, Germany, Australia. So it's a whole different world. But the attention to this fight is blowing me away. It really is. We say it's fair that there looks, there's not the same kind of political considerations, but the financial impact here is uh, beyond compare relative to the sport of boxing's history, right? There is n no political implications in the fight, but there are cultural implications. There's one fighter who's very, very good, no taking away from him, who really represents, by his own admission, ostentatious consumption with all the cars and all, all the doodads and so That's not bad because it also helps the economy because the people have to build the cars, have, you know, service them. And the other fighter is caught up in this genuine belief in God and the belief that he's here to do good for humanity. And in an athlete, it's really surprising for somebody to be so dedicated to godlike things. People ridiculed uh, Tim Tebow. Uh, well, Tim Tebow is no Manny Pacquiao. If we're just talking skills, though. No, but as but as far as his religious beliefs are concerned, they are akin to what Manny Pacquiao is. So. One final question here. There's a lot to look forward to. It's going to be a grand event. It's a it's a it's a boon for the sport of boxing. The ticket sales thing was kind of interesting to me, though. Not the 500 that eventually got released and all that issue that happened, but it's a weird dynamic, right? Because the gate is 70 plus million, so it's two guys in a ring who are millionaires fighting for other millionaires. There's not going to be a lot of like true hardcore boxing fans in the audience. Is that a regrettable thing? It's regrettable that in this world. There is the 1% and the 99%. The 1% keeps making more and more money and spending it lavishly because money means nothing. Money is a cheap commodity. And so everything is out of proportion. For the other 99%, they're working hard to put bread on the table. Something is fundamentally wrong with that system both here in the United States and other places in the world. But hey, I ain't running for office. Bob, thank you for your time. Best of luck to you on Saturday.